Hoffman. This is Carlos. I'm here with Fred Canoe. And this afternoon we're going to show you uh, our bin picking solution that we uh, partnered with Gint. Uh, we have a 3D printed model here of a flange. Uh, we had a customer come to us with this application, curious if we were able to remove these parts that are randomly placed in the bin. Uh, we called up Gantz, they were more than helpful. Uh, and so we're going to actually do a final demonstration with you. Okay, and uh, uh, we're excited to do this 3D. I'm really happy of how this has turned out for us at Keyence. The uh, RV has been in development for quite a while for us. Uh, this is a, a, a common thing that's come up is the idea of being able to pick parts out of a bin randomly. It's generally been that we built um, is specifically designed to attack some of those challenges within the 3D imaging. So we wanted to take advantage of our knowledge of 3D imaging create a four camera system that essentially points a camera right at each wall to build the best 3D image possible. That way we can use our new search algorithms and 3D search algorithms to accurately do this alongside um, obviously the robot programming, but uh, our system is going to give those 3D coordinates to the robot so that it can drive the robot right to it. And our pathfinding software actually takes some of the complexity out of some of these more complex motions to go get the parts and also avoids collisions with the environment and anything that you design in the so, you ready to get this thing moving? Yeah, with that, I'll get this going. Sounds good. So, you've got a couple screens here. Um, you guys can see we've got the part in the top view. We've also got an on-hand camera in the lower right from the Keyent system, kind of showing you the path planning and the robot's positions as it executes. So, you are uh, running the system the robot programmers mission, whoever's working with this and some of that. But what we're going to provide is an actual path plan to go into the bin to get the parts out safely and accurately. We can also then place the parts in position. Regardless of how we pick them, we can actually reorient the parts into placement. That way, we're getting the parts in the exact same place every time, as well as clearing the bin, right? So in an application, a lot of times that's going to be one of the key parts is we do also not only have to pick the part, but we need to get it to the same place every single time so that it can move on in the next process or part of the factory. So as you can see, the camera actually takes the picture as soon as the robot's clear to bin, allowing it to achieve a little bit faster of a cycle time and have that coordinate system ready to go. And as you see the robot come up to the center point again, it's got the positions and everything ready. The screen you see on the left is actually the key inside where it uses the robot model and that platform that's drawn in there is the same platform as you see in the environment within our um, software to do the collision modeling and avoid it for the path system to go in place. And that's what you can kind of see on the screen there. If I zoom in a little bit, you can actually see how the 3D imager is locating the parts. And then the robot's going ahead to pick them. So what bin picking allows you to do is really change the design of an picking flex feeders, we can avoid conveyors, we can avoid things like that and change the way we design the overall, not just a single line, but the plant. You know, a vibratory bowl for larger parts can be sometimes almost impossible. So we can do this even on parts as large um, as a full size pallet. This is our small camera here that we're using, which is going to be the highest accuracy. But we also have uh, two other cameras, the biggest one being 50 inches by 50 inches with a 40 inch depth. So we're targeting the pretty much take any size palette that we can get with this camera and have enough depth of field to accurately still image and guide the parts for picking. So go ahead and reset the bin there so you see a few more piles, but um, things are looking good on that live demo, right? So on our end, we will actually uh, give you these robot models 
from our website so that you can load in whatever robot that you want to use. We can actually coordinate not just with Fennec, but with almost any robot manufacturer, Epson, Denso, um, ABB, Motoman, Kawasaki's. The list kind of goes on and we're trying to develop constant drivers for any other robots that are commonly used or we want to add to this cell. But the idea being we give you this driver for the Fennec robot. You add that in, you program your robot around that driver, but that driver will allow us to communicate all of these waypoints to the robot accurately. We're also going to calibrate with the robot using the same drivers, doing an automatic calibration where we can actually drive the robot around holding a target. So that way we can coordinate the camera's field of view and coordinate systems straight to the robots so that we have a direct one-to-one -one connection and we're giving that information straight ahead. So the camera itself, if you notice all the flashing lights there, is actually a pattern projection system that we're using for this. It's taking 136 images every single time you see all those lights flicker. It's taking all those images, looking at all those patterns, and stacking them up to create the 3D point cloud that you kind of see on the screen there and that 3D image. But because of the four cameras, as long as one of the four cameras can pick up the projectors, we're going to be able to complete the 3D image. So it's going to allow us to get a lot more detailed 3D images than a traditional you know, single axis top down 3D scanner or like a laser scanner that we've, you know, we've had laser and pattern projection technologies for a while, but we determined that we needed to get a little bit more accuracy and a little bit more complete of a 3D image in order to, um, in order to achieve bin picking accurately. So like I said in the beginning, this is something we've worked a long time to develop um, and we're finally excited that we're launching this and this opportunity to solve some of these tougher bin picking applications that we think are out there. Yeah, we'll show you a couple things in the software here. Um, screen lag's a little bit tricky to work with. I'm going to slide over. Okay, so this is our actual key in software. It's based on our CVX platform, if you're familiar with um, some of our vision systems. And there's actually a couple different things you can do alongside this, but it's using a 3D search tool to actually locate and find the parts themselves. And then there's a, you can use a 3D pick tool, which is simply going to locate the targets and give you coordinates, maybe for an easier motion or a part that's maybe not in a bin. Or you can also use our path planning tools, which will allow you to actually build the kind of the entire application from grip position to place position and everything in between. If you can see these dots here on the screen, the green dots are points that we've kind of taught the system, um, you know, where we want to place the part, where we want to start from, all these pink dots, purple dots, are the waypoints that we're outputting to the robot every single cycle. We can actually also go into this troubleshooting button here and you can see a little bit of how the system actually runs. Is we're actually trying multiple different picks every single time, essentially looking at our options and trying to uh, see if we can't um, look at 50 different options. And if you have enough options for the system to process through, some of them are gonna work. So if we scroll down through here, you can see that there's actually a ton of really easy picks on this part, but maybe we go to another part that's got some other collisions or potential things happening. But what this troubleshooting tool does is not only shows you how it's working on the back end of it and how it's cycling through different pick options, but you can look at maybe why it's not picking the last couple parts so that you can make changes and troubleshoot to uh, get to the point where you're clearing 99 to 100% of the parts in the bin. Programming the system is actually pretty simple. Um, we've done a lot to try to, to make this pretty user friendly and that's something Keyence is always doing within our software. But if I actually go into the, uh, the software for a moment here and go into the path planning tool, we can show you a couple of the steps that are involved in setting this up. So kind of like I mentioned, you're actually going to build this environment that we're working in. And this is made so that you can add obstacles and get accurate positions and everything for the robot um, so that our collision avoidance is accurate. Anything you model into the system, the path planning is going to try to avoid. But here's where you position the robot, load your robot in and get everything accurate to how our work cell is. From there, you actually can load in CAD models of the grippers and the parts. So we make that pretty easy to get set up and programmed in. And you can build these hand models for what your gripper looks like. And you can actually add additional um, features or make changes right within our software to how this hand models in the real world. 
Then when you get into your grips, how we teach the grips, you're going to essentially teach grips for each side of the part. And you're going to place the gripper in space on the part to align exactly how it would grip. Now you can actually drive the robot up to a part and grip it and save that position in space and pull it. But a lot of times it's actually easier to just create a new grip within this software. And you can essentially move it and position it with, within space here. So. So then once you've kind of set up your grips, oh, I click buttons too fast, I apologize. <laughs> sure we've all done that a few times, but once you've actually set up your, your grip positions, you can come in here and then actually adjust the workflow of the pathfinding tool itself. <laughs> Bear with me, I'm working from pretty far away from the screen here, but the pathfinding tool uh, gives you this flow chart and this workflow of how you're actually going to operate. So we'll help you set up kind of the steps between the starting point out of the way of the robot. And then you're going to add, you know, maybe an above box position, a place position into this workflow. And you can even tell the camera when to trigger from here as well. And then lastly, you're just going to kind of verify that you have options and it's working. And as we kind of saw, you know, this, these picks have already been set up, so we're pretty much good to go with this program. But that's a little bit of a glimpse into some of the software behind what we're doing on the key and send, um, and behind the pathfinding tools that we really think make bin picking a lot more viable than it's ever been as a successful application out in the field. The camera itself is actually pretty easy to set up too a little bit backwards when I go into it, but here's actually what your 3D image is going to look like that we get from the camera system. But you'll notice there's an auto-tune button. So what we tried to do is instead of trying to guess 3D settings, noise cut settings, things like that, you can actually just draw a box around your actual parts and hit auto-tune and it'll adjust that shutter speed to the most optimal level. Now we could change it from there maybe to make the system go faster or something like that, but we're trying to design this to be pretty easy to set up. And then you can also add 2D cameras to this. It's not something we have in part of our demo today, but if you needed to add an additional camera to maybe check the part on the grip or do a quick inspection of some kind, you can add additional cameras to the same controller, still talking to the robot for that one-to-one -one connection. So that's a nice little glimpse into our software that we run here with the, uh, with the Key and CVX series on the vision side and then our RB camera on the top end, providing us with an optimal 3D image to do this type of an application. Is there anything you want to add or um, chime in with, Chad? Uh, no, that's, that covers a lot of it. Uh, we, we found uh, working with Gantz is really, really easy to work with them. The software is easy to work with. I think we got it in on a Thursday. I think by that Friday, we had 95% of it running. Uh, Travis came in the following week, showed us a few things. Uh, it's really easy to calibrate, really easy to set up. Uh, I think that's about it, unless there are any online questions. I'm not sure if there's any online questions. Other than that, if not, we can leave you with the, uh, the demo running a few more times and uh, see if anyone chimes in with any questions with our experience with this, with this system. Perfect. Uh, it's in run mode now. You should be able to go. Perfect. No, and I appreciate you guys having me in here to talk about the system today. Um, glad the demo has been great for us working here. And if anyone has any other questions that they'd like to reach out to us about, more than happy to help. And uh, thanks for your time.